From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Maria. Maria? Well, isn't it kind of late at night to call? You've got to help me, Johnny. I'm being followed. You're being... Aren't you at home? No, it's a little cafe on the waterfront. I came in here to phone. Why the devil did you have to go out? Everything was set up. If you'd stayed home, you'd have been safe. What are you trying to do, get yourself killed? Johnny, this is not time. Where are you? What's the name of the place? The, the Marrakesh, number 41, Rue de la Mer. I'm afraid to go outside. No, whatever you do, don't go outside. Stay right where you are until I get there. But Johnny, Take I'm... your choice, Maria. It's either that or wind up on a marble slab. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You know better than anybody. Now stay there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Algiers, North Africa, to the Home Office Transworld Fidelity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Lorco Diamonds Matter. $100,000 in jewels stolen and a murder. Expense account continued. (laughs) Item 12, $2.20. Taxi fare to the waterfront of the Marrakesh Cafe. There was no time to lose and no time to get help from Inspector Marcus. A half hour earlier, he'd set a trap, and he and his men were staked out around Maria's apartment house waiting. But apparently, she'd gone to the cafe before he got there. So now the whole thing had blown wide open. Rue de la Mer was a dead-end street close to the water, deserted at this hour of night. A couple of dim street lights and a light over the door of the Marrakesh Cafe. Everything else was in darkness. There was no movement, no sign of life. Over here, Johnny. Oh, thank heaven you got here. Uh, No trouble so far, No, except with that sailor over there. He finally passed out. Well, you're probably used to that kind of trouble. Cigarette? Yes, thank you. Now, what were you doing down here at this time of night? I, uh, was visiting a friend. Is that the friend's car parked out at the curb? Yes. Charlie Barrett, huh? The meatpacker from Chicago who was going to give you the Lorco diamonds. Well, I figured he'd get over his manspell. How did you know about it? He told me just before I knocked him out for the second time tonight. He said you two had a fight over a week ago. And that he told you he wasn't buying any diamonds after all. Well, it was just... For a while, I thought I had you tagged again. I wondered why you hadn't canceled the order when you'd been told he wasn't going to pay for the stuff. Johnny, it was just a talk. I knew he would come around. Yeah, well, that's about the way I figured it. Another explanation. So I let you off the hook again. Why, Johnny? Why have you been trying so hard? Trying what? To find some way of involving me in this. Well, the facts just seemed to turn up. I wasn't trying to find them. It made a big difference, didn't it? Learning about Mr. Barrett. Learning what about him? That I was accepting a $20,000 gift from him. Why should it? Your life's your own. It did, though. Before that, you were... Well, you seemed to be interested. Sure. You're a very beautiful woman. And that's all it was? What more did you want? All right, Johnny. Forget it. I don't blame you. Hey, tell me something. What about Barrett? Now that you've kissed and made up, is the engagement back on again? I haven't decided yet, Johnny. Ah. Well, come on. Let's get out of here. I'll take you home. Do you think it's safe? There was no sign of anybody around when I came in. Whoever it was probably got scared off. Oh, I was scared to death. When I saw the lights of the cafe, I jammed on the brakes and ran for the door. There, the car was right behind me. Get a look at the driver? No. How'd you get hold of Barrett's car? Borrow it? He gave it to me. Hmm. Not a bad night's work. It's a good car. Get in. You really play rough, don't you, Johnny? Sometimes. It depends on... Get down. Quick. Back of the car. It came from across the street. It's pitch black over there. What are you going to do? Look, Maria, you're safe as long as you're back of the car here. What about you? I can't get a shot from here. I'm pinned down. I'm going to make a run for that stone curb, try to draw a shot and see where the flash comes from. Be careful, Johnny. Oh, don't worry, kid. I'm the carefulest guy you ever saw. All right, now sit tight. Here goes. Are you all right, Johnny? Yeah, I think I got him spotted. 
Let's see just how close I can... There's somebody running away. Yeah, so do I. Oh, where the devil? Why don't they get some streetlights down there? That car that's starting up. Yeah, I see it. They're getting away. One lucky shot might... Ah. Give me your keys. Wait here. I'm going after them. No, no, I'm going with you. Then pile in. Hurry up. Let's go. A few blocks away, I picked up the taillights of the other car and poured on the gas to keep hanging on. We roared through the empty streets along the waterfront, then swung into the coast road and headed out of the city. The model I was driving had been built for road racing, and barring accidents, I didn't figure the car ahead had much chance of shaking me. It was a narrow, winding road following the rocky edge of the headlands, and the curves were sharp and dangerous, especially at the speed we were traveling. Finally, it happened. The car ahead roared up a steep grade and missed the curve at the top, it rolled over and over, the headlights cutting crazy patterns in the blackness as it plunged down towards the beach. I finally braked to a stop about 30 yards from the wreck, jumped out and started toward it, and just then... The gas tank caught and burst, and the car exploded into a tower of flames. I caught a glimpse of the driver pinned in the wreck. Then the fire took over and covered him, and I knew one thing was certain. He'd had it. It's dying down. Yeah. The gasoline is all burned down. Oh, what a terrible way to die. What way isn't? I guess... Johnny, could I have a cigarette, please? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Thank you. Yeah, light up, Maria, while you watch him burn. What a horrible thing to say. It's quite a relief, though, isn't it, knowing you're safe now? Well, of course it's a relief when someone has just tried to kill you and now you know that they... That's true, but it's not what I meant. I don't think I understand you. What I meant was you're safe because now he won't be able to talk. Able to... Who won't be able? Do you mean you know who's in that car? Of course, and so do you. It's the customs property agent, Andre Jardin. Andre? Sure. Who else would have any reason to kill you since he was the only one left after... Oh, I guess you haven't heard about it yet. Bobo's dead, too. What? Who is Bobo? Your other partner. Andre shot him in the back earlier tonight, up in the Casbah. So you're doubly safe now, Maria. They're both dead. And for everything else, you've got an explanation. With just one exception. I don't even know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, now, don't be modest. Actually, it was quite a scheme, whether you thought it up or Andre oh, did. Oh, you are out of your mind. The idea was to make sure the diamond courier died, either on the plane or at least before he got through customs. That way, the courier's briefcase would be sent to Andre's office. Then Bobo was to help Andre fake the stick-up. But Bobo turned out to be a tough cookie. This may be true, Instead but of I... sticking to plan, he decided to go for broke. When he slugged Andre, he tried to make it stick, but Andre managed to reach his gun, so he ended up in the hospital instead of the morgue. What has all this got to do with me? Then Andre got the idea of a double cross. He left the hospital, went into the cosmo to look for Bobo. He found him. And he killed him. I still don't see His what... next step was a natural, to knock you off and keep the whole take for himself. We expected it, and we were ready for him. Inspector Marcus is staked out right now at your apartment house, waiting for Andre to show up. We didn't know you'd already gone out earlier. Well, all of this may be true, Johnny. But why do you insist on trying to fit me into the picture? Because that's where you belong. I mentioned the fact that you'd been able to come up with an explanation every time you needed it, with just one exception. What exception? Both Andre and Bobo have tried to kill you this evening. Why? Unless you were in on this thing, what reason would they have? Well, I... I don't know. I... Of course. Why should I know? I don't know why they tried to kill me, Johnny. Oh, a good answer, Maria. And it'll probably work. Yeah, you figure that one out fast. I don't know what you no, mean. No, of course you don't. Well... Who has the diamonds? I will, before morning. Johnny, why couldn't you... Knock have... it off, kid. You got the wrong guy. It won't work with me. It could. It sure, could. I know. You're beautiful, charming, lovely. And you're rotten. Rotten right to the core. What are you doing, Johnny? Going back to town. Well, wait for me. Goodbye, Maria. Johnny, wait. Johnny! An hour later, I was out at the air terminal in the customs property office watching Inspector Marcus open a vault. 
Oh, Jew, what a nuisance. Always they make these combinations so difficult. That's the general idea, Inspector. Uh, true, but still one would think... That... Ah, 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 there we are. And now, if you are correct, Monsieur Dallaire, we shall soon have our hands... There, and... that briefcase in the corner. Uh, ah, may we? Oui, oui. It is the one. Good. Let's have a look at it. It will be necessary to force the lock. Here, pry it open with this. Looks like an easy one. It is merely a matter of... Voila. Beautiful, no? Yeah. Too beautiful. Hmm. Tell me something, Monsieur Dollar. What made you know that Andre Jordan was guilty? Something Bobo said just before he died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He confessed he was the man who had slugged Andre. But Andre had described his assailant as tall and thin. Bobo was short with a stocky build. Andre had lied. Mm. And all this time, the diamonds were right here in this vault to which Andre, as property agent, had access. Can you think of a safer place? Hey, Inspector, what about Maria Datoria? Mm. Well, I, I, I am inclined to agree with you, Monsieur Dollar, but... Uh, well... Yeah, I know. Nothing but suspicion. Yeah, precisely. If I were to file charges and bring her to trial on such evidence as this... Well, it, she would cry a little, perhaps, and look very beautiful. And, monsieur, the court would hang me, not her. Yeah, you're right. You could never make it stick. Yeah. C'est la vie. Expense account item 13, $624.80. Hotel, meals, and incidentals in Algiers, and transportation back to the States. Expense account total, $1,214.60. End of expense account. End of report. Remarks? Social item. To be circulated widely. The Countess Maria Datolia was married yesterday to C.K. Barrett, a big tycoon in the meat business. The happy couple will make their home in Chicago. All companies in that area who may be asked to underwrite insurance on the life of C.K. Barrett, don't. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be a new exciting story on Johnny Dollar beginning next Monday. Next week, the Broderick matter, an exciting chase after a charming, beautiful girl. After all, who wouldn't? Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Lillian Bayef, Jack Moyles, Victor Perrin, C.K. Barrett, Lawrence Dobkin, Forrest Lewis, and Jay Novello. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>